This is the second video covering signals on the West Somerset Railway. In this video we're going to look at four things. Firstly we'll take a look at a little wrinkle about shunt signals which we didn't cover in the first video in the series. Then we're going to look at a couple of special features of Great Western signals that we have here on the West Somerset Railway, two different features. And then thirdly, we're going to look at colour light signals, some of which we have on the West Somerset Railway, as distinguished from mechanical semaphore signals. If you've not watched the first of the two videos before, it's probably worth having a look at that first and you'll find that in the playlist or on West Somerset Railway TV. So here we go with signals part two. Now we looked at individual shunt signals before and what they mean to a driver, but at four locations on the West Somerset Railway, we have pairs of shunt signals, one above another, like the example you're looking at now at Minehead. And they are paired because there are two possible routes from this shunt signal. This is signals number 19 and 20, and they are at the Taunton end of the Minehead platform. And a locomotive stood the Taunton side of these has a choice of route. It can either run into the main platform, usually when it's running around its train to pick up its train, or it can run into the run round loop often if it's going across into the loco sidings. Some railway companies, particularly the Southern Railway, in this circumstance would only have provided one shunt signal without an indication of route. But the Great Western practice was when there were multiple routes was to provide an indication of route by which signal cleared. In this instance, we have two routes and therefore two signals. But which applies which way? It could be either and there has to be a convention applied. And the straightforward convention in, on Great Western signal layouts is top left, bottom right. So the top, of the, two, the top signal of the two is number 19, and that applies to the left-hand route into the platform. And number 20, the lower disc, applies to the right-hand route into the run-round loop. There were instances at complicated Great Western stations where you might have three or even four routes from one location and then there would be three or four shunt signals stacked, one on top of another. But the most complex we get to on the West Somerset Railway is two. The second feature that I'd like to point out to you, and this is a Great Western speciality called a centre balanced signal. Now we have two examples on the West Somerset Railway. We have one at Bishop's Lydiard, and we have one at Williton on the up platform. Just like any other signal, they are at danger or being stop when the signal is horizontal and to change to go or be pulled off or to be at proceed, they move through 45 degrees, so they're at 45 degrees from the horizontal. But they do that with a centre pivot right in the centre of the signal. What that means is that the amount of area that the signal describes when it moves is very much smaller than other types of signals. And so they can be squeezed in in places where a conventional signal, if it were stuck out or moved down in the normal way, would foul either people on a platform or trains moving. Here's the example of Bishop's Lydiard, seen from behind, and it can be seen how small a space this has to squeeze in as the train runs by along a narrow section of platform. The third feature of Great Western Signals, which once again we have two examples of, is a sighting board or a backboard for a signal. We have examples of these at Blue Anchor, we have an example at Williton, and they're a white quadrant shape fixed behind the signal so that from a distance it's very much clearer to a driver that the signal has moved from danger to proceed. They're used in circumstances where there's a confusing background. For this reason, 
the up-home signal at Bluenka has a sighting board, because otherwise a driver coming from Minehead would be trying to read, understand the position of the signal against the confusing background of the station buildings behind, and the board makes the position of the signal much clearer for the driver. Other railway companies often would paint white squares on bridges and the like, but the Great Western had produced this type of fitting, which is fitted directly to the signal, and helps the signal give a very good, clear indication to a driver. Now we're going to look at some colour light signals. And we have a few on the West Somerset Railway. We have two at Bishop's Lydiard, we have one at Minehead, and arguably we have a couple that certainly West Somerset Railway crew need to know about at Norton Fitzwarren, and we'll come to those. They're on network rail territory, but they're signals that West Somerset Railway trains use occasionally, especially when we're going to and from the national network. So we'll talk about those. Let's start with the two south of Bishop's Lydiard. Two colour light signals at Bishop's Lydiard are not visible to normal visitors to the station because they're situated south of the station on the line to Norton Fitzwarren and the junction with the national network. The first of the two, working our way south from the station, is alongside what we call the up sidings, which are the carriage sidings south of the station. And that's the section signal, the last controlled signal, which allows trains to run down to Norton Fitzwarren. It's controlled from Bishop's Lydiard signal box and normally displays a red aspect, a danger aspect, and when cleared, displays a green aspect, a green light. Somewhat further south, the other side of Derby's crossing, the farm crossing that's just south of the station, is BL102 signal. And that's the signal that applies in the opposite direction. That's the outer home signal for trains coming from Norton Fitzwarren. It's also a two aspect colour light signal. It's normal red light, which means stop. We see it displaying its proceed aspect, which is a single yellow. And that's because it's only a few hundred yards up until the first semaphore signal at Bishop's Lydiard, which we call one stroke three signal, which you can see from the station. That's the large bracket signal south of the station. Because the distance between those is relatively short, BL102 signal displays a yellow aspect that reminds the driver he should be looking out for the aspect of that first semaphore signal south of the station. These two signals at Bishop's Lydiard are very much in the style of signals installed by British Railways Western Region in the 1960s, when colour light signals were taking over from semaphore as the standard, because they had no moving parts, uh, they had electric lights as opposed to the oil lamps used for most semaphores, and so could function just as well by day as by night, and required very much less maintenance, and only needed an electrical connection and not a mechanical connection, as semaphore signals do. We also have them here at Bishop's Lydiard uh, for ease of installation itself and because they are very much out of sight of our normal public so they don't detract from the semaphore signalled era which we normally attempt to portray. Interesting to think that these are now a type of signal that are regarded in West Somerset Railway terms as modern, but in fact are 60 years out of time. In both cases, these are what's known as two aspect signals. So they can only display two colors. Now let's come to the next signal, a signal that many of you will have seen, which is Minehead's inner home signal. 
numbers 21 to 26. An interesting number for a signal, and we'll come to why it's that. There's quite a collection of stuff on the signal post, and let's work down that in order. So at the very top, we have what's called a, a junction indicator, or a feather. We'll come, how to, come to how that works. And then we have a signal head with three lenses that can display three different colours. The top lens displays a yellow aspect for proceed. The middle lens displays a red aspect for stop. The bottom lens is the flashing white light that indicates that the level crossing has operated properly. And then below that we have a theatre indicator which can display a combination of letters and we'll talk about how that works. And then below that we have the colour light equivalent of a shunt signal. Now because this is subsidiary to the red light that is normally displayed at the signal when it's, it's resting danger on position, normally it isn't displaying anything. Often colour light shunt signals display a white light and a red light horizontally and they change to two white lights at 45 degrees for a proceed aspect. But because this is a subsidiary signal, the normal aspect of those of that light is no lights. And then further down the post we have a telephone in case the driver needs to contact uh, us the signalers. So let's have a look at the diagram for Minehead. Now this is the diagram taken from our rule book. What you have to do is connect the two sections marked AA together to get the complete diagram. So imagine a locomotive stood at number 21 to 26 signal shown in the lower right hand side of the diagram and it's facing into the layout at Minehead. In fact there are five different routes if we follow from left to right that the train could arrive into. It could arrive into bay siding number two, bay siding number one, the bay platform, the main platform or the run round heading for the loco sidings. There are four different aspects that the signal can display and we'll come to explain why it's four aspects and five routes. Now the most often displayed would be for an arrival into the main platform and for that the red light just changes to a yellow light above it, an amber light and a flashing white light to tell us that the level crossing has worked. As simple as that. And that would be for an arrival into the main platform with nothing in the main platform. The next most likely is an arrival into the bay platform with nothing in the bay platform. In that circumstance, the red light goes out and the feather for a left hand route illuminates. And that takes us into an empty bay platform. Now what happens if there's something in either platform? Well, the red light stays illuminated. If we're going into the main platform, the red light stays illuminated and the two white lights of the subsidiary shunt signal illuminate. But to give us a route indication, we also get a letter M come up in the theatre indicator, the black box. For an arrival into the bay platform, with the bay platform occupied with something, so a locomotive, for example, running round onto its train into the bay platform. We get the feather indicator at the top. Now that's given us an indication of route, so we don't need a separate indication on the theatre indicator. But we get the two white lights under the red light. The two white lights indicate that we can pass the red light. And the driver knows, just as he did with the two white lights going to the main platform, he's going into an occupied platform and he needs to be more careful. The next leftmost route is a movement into the bay sidings. Here the red light stays illuminated, the theatre indicator comes up with BS for bay sidings and we get the two white lights and of course as, as, as ever the flashing white light to indicate the level crossing has worked. But there is only one indication whichever bay siding we're going into. So the driver ha has to take care as he's running in that he's running into the right bay siding, the one he wants to go into. And in fact, it's the signalman's responsibility in Minehead to make sure that the hand point that's just ahead 
of the points that bring you into the sidings is set for the right siding, siding number one or siding number two. Across the other side of the layout, if we were going into the loco sidings, the red light would stay illuminated. We would get LS for loco sidings in illuminated in the theatre indicator, and we get the two white diagonal 45 degree lights. And for either of the two routes, either into the loco sidings or into the main platform, because there is a shunt signal ahead at numbers 19 and 20, the pair of shunts there, they're no, what's known as running shunts and they have to be off before either of those two routes could be cleared. So why is this signal called 21 to 26? Because there are six possible movements that can be made from this signal into the station. Four separate routes and then on two of those routes you can either make a move into an unoccupied platform or an occupied platform and that requires a different lever in each case. So the signalman has six separate levers up at the taunted end of the frame to choose when he's got uh, either a train approaching or a movement standing at this signal, the inner home. Now why do we have a colour light here? Is there any reason that we couldn't have a mechanical signal here? Well, of course, no, not really. They were mechanical signals long before there were colour light signals. I was operating superintendent of the West Somerset Railway in 1990, just as this signalling was installed. And in my view, unfortunately, the planning had occurred before that. And the signal engineer at the time really wanted to install a colour light signal. I'm not really sure why. It turned out subsequently we'd been offered a mechanical signal from the Worcester area that could have been used in this location. And it required quite a lot of extra training to train people how to use a colour light signal. And in my view, it would have been better to have had a mechanical signal here. All it would have needed were many of the same things on the post. So it would have had a single mechanical full-sized arm, a shunt signal below it, and some form of theatre indicator. And the Great Western had a number of signals that had mechanical theatre indicators. So they would have a mechanical device that would bring up a letter code to show you the route that you were travelling over. And that would have been perfectly acceptable. It's possible, when we re-signal Minehead in the future, that we might move to that instead of the colour light that we have at the moment. There are other ways of doing it. It would be possible to have a large gantry with separate signals for each route. In my personal view, that would be overdoing it, especially as we're on marshy ground, but there are often different ways to skin a cat. And if you put three signal engineers and two operators together, you get at least eight ideas about how you should do things. So that's our colour light at Minehead. Now, where are the other two? Well, there are two signals down at Norton Fitzwarren that West Somerset crews particularly need to know about. One is called E627, and the other one is E324. They deal with trains either leaving or arriving onto the West Somerset Railway. From or to the national network. Let's start by getting our railway geography straight. The West Somerset Railway's junction with the national network is at the site of the former Norton Fitzwarren station. And here's a historical shot looking westward at that site, which is about two miles from the centre of Taunton. You can see the main lines heading away towards the west. And the diesel unit we're seeing here in this late 1960s shot is coming round the corner off the West Somerset Railway. Here's a more modern shot, and you can see the track is pretty much in the same position. So it's that line coming in from the right that is the West Somerset Railway. If we now turn round, at that line which was on our right, of course, is now on our left. That's the left hand most line. And we're running up to signal E627, which takes us out onto the national network. And you can see beyond E627, there is quite a complicated bit of track. Let's explain which line is which as we go past E627 signal. The main line nearest to us 
is the up main line and behind us is Exeter and we are looking towards Taunton station so the nearest line is the up main line. The next line over is the down main line where trains come towards us coming from Taunton and going to Exeter. And the third line across is a line called the up and down relief because there's an extra line, a third line, just visible in this photograph beyond the point work across the main lines between Taunton Station, past Fairwater Yard in the distance and as far as this set of point work that brings us onto the West Somerset Railway and it's jolly useful that there is because it means that a train coming onto or running off the West Somerset Railway can get off the main lines and use the up and down relief as far as Taunton Station. The downside is that to get from the up and down relief onto the West Somerset Railway or the other way around a train has to cross both the up and down main lines so the panel signalman at Exeter who controls this arrangement has to pick his moment quite well. And as I said it's all controlled from Exeter and that's why the signals have both got E prefixes because they're controlled by Exeter panel. This signalling was installed in the 1990s. Exeter by then had been in place for about 10 years, 10-15 years, um, was installed in the mid 80s. Now Exeter was one of the last large signalling panels installed with relay interlocking, separate working relays as opposed to computer interlocking. And a problem occurred when it was decided that this junction needed to be re-signalled for passenger use. Previously, the West Somerset Railway had been able to use the junction on six occasions a year. It was normally signalled for freight use, but not for passenger use, and so special precautions had to be taken. The problem when that was upgraded was that to, you couldn't provide multiple routes. The signalling at Exeter was sufficiently rigid that it wasn't possible to provide multiple routes from signal 627 out onto the main line. You could only have one route. Now, was that route going to be on out onto the up main line or out onto the up and down relief? Better for it to be on the up and down relief because that gave somewhere for a signalman to hold a train going away from the West Somerset Railway before he had to feed it out onto the up main line. So there is only one signalled route from E627. There's no feather, there's no direction indicator, and the only route is across all that, what railwaymen call a ladder of points up ahead, right across to the right hand side onto the up and down relief. Now, even though it's effectively turning right in railway terms, because there's only one route, there's only one indication from the signal. The signal is either on, showing a red aspect, or cleared, showing a green aspect. And it's a modern type of signal, so it appears only to have one lens. What it has are LED indicators behind the signal head that change from red to green when the signalman clears the signal. So that's E627 that takes us out. Now we're looking from the other side of the ladder. We're now looking at signal E324. That's the signal that brings us off the national network across onto the West Somerset Railway at Norton Fitzwarren. Now that from this signal there are two routes. One can either take the first left hand route onto the down main line and in that circumstance the signal when cleared when it proceed would show a green aspect and no feather or you can take a route more to the right so go across the ladder onto the West Somerset Railway single line at that point the signal would display a green aspect as we're seeing in this picture would display a green aspect with a feather and that takes you across all the lines onto the West Somerset Railway. There are some special conditions about getting on and off the West Somerset Railway and we'll deal with those in a separate video because they're quite interesting in terms of how a single line railway run in heritage terms interacts with the national network. So we've looked at stacked shunt signals, at sighting boards, at centre balance signals and we've had a look at colour light signals, all on or related to the West Somerset Railway. Hope you found that interesting, 
As usual, there are some self-test questions uploaded to the West Somerset Railway Association web website. See what, how well you've picked it up. And do come for a ride and take a look at some of our signals. Thank you for listening.